I don't think there are a lot of conservative or Republican Georgia voters who think any differently of him now. In fact, I'm hearing, uh, at least according to his campaign director, his fundraising surged mm -hmm. in the light of these accusations and allegations. Um, and I'm not hearing anyone in the party, Republican leaders, denouncing it. They're standing by him. So we might be, you know, alarmed by it, I think rightly so. But I don't think this will shake loose a lot of voters. He might not win, but I don't think it's going to be because, be because Republican voters in Georgia decide, well, this, this is too far. <laughs> well, all right, look, so, I mean, part of this, obviously, is that the bar for Herschel Walker couldn't be any lower. But still, I think the Daily Beast reporting is surprising to the extent that on the same day he's saying, I don't have a clue who this woman is. They say, actually, it's a woman you had a previously undisclosed child out of wedlock with. So that, you know, that 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 doesn't track. Um, look, in, in defense of Georgia voters and Georgia Republican voters, you know, in, in 2020, they proved that swing voters, you know, were still alive. They split the ticket between, you know, mm -hmm. between folks. And, and that's one of the reasons Joe Biden won is Republicans, particularly in the suburbs in Georgia, said, you know what? I can't deal with Donald Trump again. I'm going Biden. The problem is, I think a lot of Republican operatives have been saying out loud and commentators, you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you hypocrite on abortion. All we want is, is, is this seat. Character doesn't matter. Competence doesn't matter. Truth telling doesn't matter. And that is, I think, a really dangerous thing. That's about not being post-history, but potentially post-truth when it comes to this stuff. But, but what we're seeing is that character and ethics are really not a qualifying factor mm -hmm. for elected officials anymore. People are looking past but, a lot of that. And, and mm -hmm. it's unfortunate, but it is actual reality. And, and here's what we're going to see. Mm -hmm. October surprises are just as common as we saw the leaves changing and death and taxes. People expect that. But my, in my conversations with people in my home state of Georgia, they are not concerned with what Herschel Walker did in 2009. They're looking at what he is promising to do as a U.S. senator. He's not promising to do anything else. Let's be honest about this. What we're saying is character doesn't count if, if, you know, in, in a Senate seat. What we're saying is competence doesn't count because Honestly. nobody's voting. Right. I mean, you know, and, and that's what's really dangerous, because if you go down that slippery slope, and you say that character doesn't count, competence doesn't count, telling the truth doesn't count. What you're really saying is party above country, power above everything. And that's antithetical to the idea of the Senate and to the ideals that our democracy actually depends upon, which is some people, enough people saying the person over the party. But, but they never know. What, 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 go what ahead, are, Alice, go what ahead. What people are focusing on are the policies. They look at what this personal... What policies, There's no policy here. His policies with regard to fighting uh, crime. With, 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 what with, policies does Herschel have? Working, working He's against it? He certainly wants is, to. Is, is Rafael Wannick for it? Well, I mean, you got a reverend here. You're a person of faith. You got an actual reverend or someone who lies about getting an abortion while being anti abortion on the surface. Isn't that as a per to the extent that faith impacts political decisions? I'm not understand. I'm not clear why some Georgia voters who are people of faith wouldn't say, given the overturning of Roe, you know what? The actual reverend but might be a better emissary Donald of faith. Trump. I hate to do this, but I have to give credit to SC Cup and John Avalon because the points that they were making there. Were phenomenal and the clip is much longer so i'll link to that down below if you want to watch the full thing but the way that that gop operative tried to rationalize this is just laughable you can't pretend as if gop voters are voting on substance in 2022 america that's just not what they're doing anymore they're very clearly not voting on substance because you have so many candidates who aren't running on substance they're either trying to you know, galvanize people to vote for them based on hysteria, CRT, or grooming, or they're just hate-mongering about immigrants and other people who are marginalized minorities. So you can't tell me that the GOP base is concerned with policy. A and we'll get to that here in a moment because we have some interviews from Herschel Walker supporters that I think are fascinating as well. So she tries to rationalize it by saying, well, look, I don't think that voters are concerned with what Herschel Walker did in 2009. They're concerned with what he's going to do policy-wise as a senator, which is when they chime in and say, he's not looking to do anything. He doesn't have an agenda. Has anyone heard Herschel Walker talk about policy? It rarely happens, but when it does, it's comical. He makes a fool of himself, which is why he's probably coached to stick to platitudes because when he talks about substance or tries to talk about substance, it does not go well for him. And she later said that people are focused on policies. They responded by saying, what policies? And she says, well, policies with regard to uh, crime. And then John Avalon chimes in saying, well, what policies in particular is Herschel Walker promoting that will reduce the level of crime? Is he just saying he's against crime? 
that's that's just such a devastating point because this is the problem with the modern day GOP. And to be fair, this has been an issue for a very long time. They fear monger about the crime. They fear monger about high gas prices, inflation, geopolitical issues, but they never propose any solutions ever. They just say what Joe Biden is doing is bad, but they don't say, here's how I would do things differently. They never Follow up with that point. Logically, if you see a problem and you're running for political office where you will be in a position of massive power and you have some political authority, well, you have to follow up with a policy prescription. You can't just say, I don't like this, I don't like that, and then leave it at that. You have to say, okay, gas prices are high. Here's what I do. But we see House GOP, Senate GOP, they don't try to be part of the solution. We've seen this year how they voted against capping the cost of insulin, voted against reining in oil and gas companies who are price gouging. Time and again, they vote against things that they complain about. They vote to not be the solution. They just want to complain because they don't want to give Joe Biden or Democrats a dub. So they just complain. So you can't claim with a straight face that the base at this point in time, when they know what the GOP has been doing, is policy focused because they're just not. Now, HuffPost went to a particular area in Georgia, which is going to kind of be, to my understanding, a determining factor, a determining county in who gets elected in the Georgia Senate race. And, you know, not everyone was pro Herschel Walker in this instance. Some of them were kind of split. They were voting for the Libertarian Party. But a lot of these Republicans, they just don't care. They're unfazed by the revelations that we've learned about with regard to Herschel Walker. Quote, we're all sinners. Wanda Bettis, a part-time cook, told HuffPost on Wednesday as she strolled into a Walmart in the suburbs north of Atlanta, a critical battleground in the state. We've all done some things we're not proud of. I'm sure he's done some things he's not proud of. You can't blame him always for things he's done in the past, she added. Another Republican voter who identified himself only as Jimmy said he is sticking by Walker even even though he considers him a dishonest person. I'm not crazy about him, but he's better than the alternative, said Jimmy, who is a retired caregiver from coming. Is Walker my favorite candidate? You've got two choices. You pick the best of what you got. Cynthia Berglund, a dental hygienist from Milton, said she had a hard time believing somebody that kept receipts from that long, referring to the former girlfriend. She also wasn't convinced by the angry tweets and videos posted by Walker's son, suggesting Walker's ex-wife may be responsible for turning her son against his father. Of course, Walter Pijanowski, a retired engineer from Marietta, told HuffPost he wasn't crazy about Walker, but felt he was a better choice than voting for a Democrat. So think about this. Herschel Walker's own son comes out and exposes him and says, this is an individual who is a liar. If you're a family values person, this man does not have a shred of family values in him whatsoever. He leaves his family members, he has kids, doesn't raise them, and he has destroyed lives. He has been violent. So this is not somebody who is a good representative for somebody who cares about family values, and they still don't care. They just don't care. We're in this situation where evangelicals who vote Republican, they would rather support a serial adulterer who is violent, who has had multiple kids with multiple mothers, who paid for an abortion over a literal reverend in Raphael Warnock simply because he's a Democrat. That's where we're at. So this is why people don't take evangelicals seriously, because all these things that they purported to support over the years, family values, pro-life values, they toss that out the window, which goes to show you that they're not serious about the things that they say. Remember, supposed pro-life people, i.e. forced birthers, they claim that abortion is tantamount to murder. Herschel Walker paid for an abortion. He effectively, according to them, using their logic, hired a fucking hitman to assassinate a baby, according to them. And they're like, eh, don't really care. At least he's not a Democrat. I mean, what do you say? What do you say about that? It shows you that these people are, they're unwinnable. They're too far gone. And, you know, this is demonstrated by the fact that they're standing with Herschel Walker, even as these scandals that should delegitimize him in their eyes do nothing to him. His fundraising surges. It's just, it's genuinely astonishing, but this is 
the modern GOP, this is what we're working with, where you can't win them over by making policy appeals. You simply have to virtue signal to them, and you have to hate and own the people who they also hate and want you to own. It's just, it's toxic. But this is the GOP in 2022, folks. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I built a successful chicken business. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I built a successful chicken business. I don't talk like a politician.